and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Chris Myers and I'm here to show you a craft. I'm an author of two crafting books, Seasonal Scandy Crafts and Scandy Christmas. I want to show you a very simple craft today that might make your neighbors very happy. I grew up in rural Canada where you had to make and mend and find things to make that was either outside your front door, in your barn, in your garage, or in your pantry. And from using your imagination, you can make things. So I thought I would make something from the Seasonal Scandy book, which I called it a May Day uh, present, but it can be used at any time of the year. And in particular right now, when we have everyone staying at home and it's um, a very sad situation, it might be nice for somebody having a knock on their front door and as they open it, they find a beautiful posy in an adorable jar or can as it as it will be um, at the front step. So that's what we're going to do. It doesn't take long, it doesn't take a lot of ingredients to make it. It is just fun, simple, and the pleasure I'm sure will be immense. So before we start, I think it's always so important to make sure you have all your equipment that you want for your craft ready at the table. So today all you need to have is a can. So this is a sweet corn can, baked beans, tomatoes, whatever you have will work. Uh, some paint, some glue, flowers of course, some embroidery floss, scraps of fabric and ribbon, and I think you're done. Um, you might need a tag, I think it might be sweet if you have a tag, because unless you want to leave it as a surprise, a tag to say uh, who it's from, and we'll, I'll show you that as well. So first things first is to paint your, your tin. So take your tin and your paint, very simple. And all you're gonna do is, the best thing is if you put your hand inside, upside down your tin like this, you don't get your hand all mucky, dip in a little bit of paint. And I always say dry painting, which sounds very funny, but dry painting is the best. So you don't want a whole lot of paint on your paintbrush because you want this to dry fairly quickly so you can start your craft. So you're just quickly putting on the paint on the tin. And actually it's only really one, one coat that you need, depending on the look that you want. But one tin just makes it look like a special vessel instead of a tin can. So that's what you're doing. Very simple and very easy. So I've got one finished so I can show it to you what it looks like at the end. Just put that away, make sure it's all careful so we don't spill it. So this is what you'll end up with. Very simple painted tin can. So there you go, so you've got that finished. Next you wanna do your covering. Now there are several ways of doing this. If you are a person who doesn't sew or doesn't have paper, um, material at home, there's nothing stopping you from using wrapping paper, brown paper, old um, uh, music sheets, anything like that. All you want to do is decorate your tin. You can either glue it on um, or tape it on depending on what you have at home. I'm going to use just plain and simple PVA glue, the white glue, and again use it sparingly because you're just sticking it onto the tin. You're not making it, uh, you don't want it wet so that you'll have to leave it to dry for a long time. So what I'm going to do for you right now is I'm going to cover the whole tin in one piece of fabric. Now again, if you want to change this, this you can. It would look really sweet if you did a patchwork. Uh, so if you had all different types of fabrics, you can make little squares, you can you could glue that on. Again, it's, it's up to you, but I'm just going to do one for now. So you're going to measure your tin to the fabric and cut along. So the nice thing about this fabric, gingham, I love gingham easy to cut, goes straight, and this is 100% cotton, so it, pull, it, it rips very easily. So once you've done that, and you've got the right size, take your, your tin, add a little bit of glue on it, all the way around. Now, I, you know, you're probably wondering why I even bothered painting this tin. The reason why I did was in case you didn't want to cover the whole tin with fabric, if you only have a little piece and you could just do a little one, then you wouldn't have to worry about the tin. I'm covering the whole tin, so you didn't actually have to paint it for, for this one. But I always say it leaves a nice, it leaves you options. So you've got your glue and all you're doing is gluing it on all the way around. And then it overlaps at the back and then you can cut it or, or glue it all the way around. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit there, not to waste any fabric, because we can use that little fabric piece for something else. See how it goes, add a little dab of glue 
to close it off like that. Oops. And that's done. And already your little tin can has been transformed into a beautiful little gingham uh, vessel, which is very sweet. So to make it even more special, I think it's nice to add a little bit of ribbon. Now again, I collect ribbon and I have bottles full. So I've gone through my stash and found this very sweet little French ribbon. But you can get ribbon, you know, I'm sure you have tons of ribbon. It can, and, and then again, if you don't have ribbon, you can again cut a piece of old um, newspaper, old um, music print, whatever, and, and put it on there. So I've measured the ribbon for around the tin and I'm gonna cut it the right size. And now, the trick for this to get it on nicely is to take your, your brush. I always use a, a paintbrush when I use glue so your hands don't get all gluey and yucky. Dip it in and just again, dot along the edge, just a little bit. Don't need a whole lot. Rather on the tin can than on the ribbon itself because then again, your hands don't get all sticky and it is a lot easier to do. There you go. So this really doesn't take long at all. And I love things that are instant actually. It is it's a lot of fun to do. So there we go. So all the way around. There you go. And that's it. And you're done, your little tin. I mean, it's very sweet. That standing alone is adorable. Now there's a little excess fabric here. You can either glue it on or cut it off. I'm just gonna cut it off. So it'll stand nicely. And there we go. Cut. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could also add ribbon down there if you wanted to. You could just, I mean, you could just use your imagination and do as much as you want. So there you go, you've got that done. Now, once you have um, that finished, you could add your little tag. So I have done a tag for you already, you can see here where I've taken some embroidery floss and a bit of linen and embroidered a, a little flower. So all you need for that is some, if you wanna, you can either do it on your own, just quickly embroider, or I like to draw a picture on. So I've, I'm, you can just draw a little flower or a heart or whatever you want and add that. So I've drawn a little one on. And for your, your stitching, I usually use two, two um, floss threads to, uh, it, for my stitching, it just looks sweeter and neater and, and tiny when you're doing such a tiny little embroidery. And what you do is stick it in. And as a friend once said, it's painting with a needle. So you just go right, it doesn't have to be perfect, do in and out, in and out, because you're just making a little tag. In and out, and then back. It's called a back stitch, very simple. In and out. And just fill it in, fill in the flower. And the same stitch goes for the stem and the, and the uh, leaves. Very, very simple. So you end up with this. So once you're finished doing that, I will take another one I've done here. I made a little wreath earlier. So you could take your tag and a little bit of, uh, I have some old um, uh, music sheets, which I think just add some charm to your little present and cut it to size, make sure it's straight, glue that on there, put glue here, and a little dab of glue on the back of your embroidery. Doesn't fray then either, stick that on, there you go. And with that, you can tie it on to your gift. If you want, you can change that to another ribbon or whatever. Um, in order to hang, if you wanted to hang this on a doorknob, you could easily do um, some wire underneath the ribbon, or if you just want to leave it on the doorstep, which is really sweet, and then they can put it on their front, on their table, their kitchen table, or their wherever they want to put it in the house. It's up to you where you want to put it or where you want to, how you want to do it. But once you finish that, I tend to change the 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 um, string from a from a tag like this and add another ribbon. Um, if you have leftover ribbon from your gingham, that's what I'm gonna do. You just take that, actually it's big enough, and push it through and tie that on like that. And then when you put your flowers in, I'm just gonna grab some flowers so you can see the end thing. 
just pop a few little flowers and these are from my garden earlier this morning a few little daisies nepita and another little daisy there and uh, i think i'll get a little bit more of these guys here some mint mint is always wonderful and the, the bonus to mint is if it's left in water long enough it will um have some roots and then they've got another present there you go add a little bit more and i would fill it up even more actually but for this you can just sort of see and then you can just tie this onto a little bit of the flower and there you go and you have a beautiful present didn't take long at all to make and you will make somebody along your road very very happy enjoy this and thank you very much for joining in bye bye